The Border Patrol, as a federal agency, was exempt from any kind of that oversight that either the FBI or the CIA was submitted to in the 1970s. There was no equivalent of the Church Committee. It really has been, in some ways, a rogue agency, both because of its nature, working in this kind of liminal area between the foreign and the domestic, and, you know, on these borderlands with very little oversight. Um, and uh, it was founded in 1924, and it was founded the same year that the U.S. passed passed its nativist immigration law, which basically reduced immigration from Asia to zero, uh, emphasized and privileged immigration from Protestant and Northern Europe. But Mexico was exempted from that law because of, because of agricultural interests. They wanted sheep. They wanted sheep access unfettered access to cheap Mexican labor. And so there was no quotas placed on Mexico. But the Border Patrol, in effect, became a consolation prize to the nativists who lost the larger argument that did want quotas placed on Mexico, because it, had, it invested in the Border Patrol an awesome amount of power to, to police immigration on the, uh, on the point of entry. And, 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 it, and there was there's many incidents of what had become of what was a fairly open process of seasonal migration increasingly became a kind of racist gauntlet where these frontline Border Patrol agents, many of them who had worked in the Texas Rangers or came from local National Guards or local police forces, they were one or two generations removed from uh, agricultural life themselves. They didn't see their interests as exactly mapping on to the large-scale agricultural interests, but they saw themselves as a broker to those interests. So they, so a lot of the, so they were able to, they were able to execute and 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 commit quite a quite a degree of unsupervised unregulated abuse on migrant. And, and you make the point that there was really a high tide of this, these attacks on migrants in the 80s and 90s, but then, oh, after the 9-11 attacks, the focus of the hate and anger yeah. shifts overseas, yeah. and there's actually some kind of a diminishing period in the early 2000s of, of the attacks on uh, migrants only now being resurrected under Trump. Yeah. Well, there's two two currents of the militarization of the border. One is the, is the, is the white supremacy, the out-and-out -out revanchist violence that gets worse after Vietnam. Right? The, the, troops, the troops radicalized from the right come, come back, and, 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 and many of them begin mobilizing on the border, and there's a, there's a spike in paramilitarism. On the other hand, there's a bipartisan militarization of the border that Clinton presides over, which, which you have covered often. So there's, there's these two tracks going on. Um, around 2000, uh, there's once again a resurgence in paramilitarism, uh, militia on the border, but then 9/11 happens, and 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 the nation's attention moves to Afghanistan and Iraq, and 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 uh, and I don't know if paramilitarism actually declines, but nobody's paying too much attention to it at the border. It begins to spike again right as Bush's but George W. Bush's wars start to fall apart. There's a way in the past. Other, usually, um, like Catherine Bilo's book, Bringing the War Home, right-wing paramilitarism happens after the war's end. In, in, in terms of the war on terror, what you see is that, that the domestic paramilitarism grows in tandem as the wars are still going on, but as they are discredited. There's, there's almost an exact correlation between Ab the scandal of Abu Ghraib which I take as a turning point in, in really desanctifying the whole foreign policy of the United States, revealing it to be morally bankrupt. And it's at that moment that the, that the Minutemen are formed. And, um, and the rise of this kind of right-wing paramilitarism, which begins to take over the Republican Party, with the nativism, you know, both the specific militias, but then generally within their orbit, and influences the debate.